everybody. This is Linda Carroll. Thanks for coming to visit with me today. And we are going to do some mail art. Uh, this is really the first uh, session that we're going to meet and create from things that you would normally throw away. They would be in the trash or in the recycle bin and never to be seen again. But we are going to use them to create art, uh, specifically collage art and some mixed media art. Uh, and I hope you've been collecting your envelopes, your catalogs, your receipts, stamps, anything that would normally be thrown away, we are going to be using today in our first get together and make some mail art using envelopes and using artwork that uh, we've made ourselves. So if you haven't collected anything, you can definitely watch this video, you know, throughout and then go out and collect some things that you can create your own mail art with or pause the video go for on a little bit of a search and then come back and work along with me so i'm going to switch to the overhead camera and i'm going to get busy doing some collage work so i hope you'll join me and i'll see you in just a second Okay, as you can see, my table is full of envelopes and postcards and things that I found to use today in my um, mail art. And I've gone to a page on Facebook that is called Mail Art, and a man and his father. Um, started a project because of the lockdown from COVID to start really bringing mail art back into the lives of artists to uh, help continue to create this community of artists who correspond to one another, correspond to their friends, and continue to move art through the mail. This piece is a really good example of the background of an envelope that is totally collaged. And right here, you can see the address. And in mail art, they try and do something uh, creative with the address. Um, the one down here, I'm not really sure where the address is in here. But again, the background's all collaged with, this looks like an, um, this looks like it's made out of leaves, actually. This is a label off of something. There are stamps. Um, so this is an idea. These are different ideas that people have come up with to create their art. This is a drawing and indeed using uh, your own artwork in the mail art is something that's really, really popular. You get an original through the mail. Um, and I really, I really like this one. Um, and then see how the uh, address is very, very decorative as well. Um, this is a drawing, looks like a watercolor pen and ink. Let's see. Part of our mail art was painting on tea bag leaves. I only use tea. Okay, this is a tea bag that would normally have been thrown away, and um, they've done a painting on it. And it looks like these were done on a on a ink inked background, and then scratched out and this looks like it was collaged on top this one's very interesting it, it uses um, some stamps some drawings some these were probably off of a postcard 
So, and then the whole background is decorated with yellow marks. I think a lot of these things are from inside the envelope. So this is the envelope that was decorated. And then this is the art, the mail art that is inside. So you can do your envelope and then also do a piece that would go inside to be mailed. This one's interesting. This one was done to celebrate World Collage Day. And they did little mini collages inside. And then this is the envelope that was um, decorated. This is basically just, um, just color pens used to do the address and everything. This is fun. Rubber stamps, markers, um, and the way they did the names, really, really cool. This was inside a, an envelope. This one was hand drawn. This one as well. Anyway, I think you get the idea. You can do anything. Play, have fun, make marks, use pieces of your own artwork, and then also things that you have, um, you have found that would have been thrown away. So <clears throat> I'm going to start working on my uh, envelope and these are some of some sketches I found in a drawer that I did in a portrait class that <clears throat> I think I'm going to tear up and cut up and um, these are uh, mark making actually this is what we use to begin the portrait to break break up the, uh, this just popped out here, 100th anniversary of mail order. Yeah, that has to go over here. So these were just used for the background of the portrait, but I thought they would make some great uh, pieces to cut up and put on my, on my envelopes. So let's get busy and create some art. Um, this was the envelope that I decided to use first. And a lot of times uh, the artist would choose a theme to use on the outside or choose colors that they felt um, went together really well. I think that on this, I'm just, I'm just gonna play. Now I'm gonna use my glue stick to glue most things down. If it's a little bit heavier, you can use white glue. Um, I'm going to use this distressed collage medium, but you can use white glue um, and uh, water mixed together to make it a little bit thinner. And um, I think you can probably use equal amounts and try that out half and half. So let's get started. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I collected some stamps um, and while I was in my search. And what I'm going to do is just start laying these out. And I knew I had a yellow envelope. So that's where I kind of went with this. Now, when I go to uh, get-togethers, um, parties, and people have 
uh, decorative napkins, I, I never throw mine away. I always save it. I always save the napkins. And I have a few of these. And I really love the shells with the spirals in them. So I think I'm going to start with this. Now, if you're going to use a napkin, it is usually two or three layers of uh, napkin on here. So what you do is you take a piece of tape and put it on the back. And the backing will just easily peel off. Now I save these pieces and um, I use it to create texture on paintings or collages. So I'm going to put that over here. And this one looks like it has two layers on it, which it does. So... Then rip that off. Now, when you, um, if you're working with a napkin, and I'm going to be working on a yellow, um, on a yellow background, but if you're working on a white background, the napkin will totally, the white will totally disappear. So let's see what happens here. Um, I'm going to, for just for fun, start with this one. Because it's yellow, it may just disappear into the um, into the envelope. And I just tear the edges. I didn't do a very good job on that. And I'm just going to put a little bit of the medium. If you're using glue, you can also use glue stick to um, glue these down. And start from the middle and work out to the outside. Now you have to be a little bit careful with these because they are kind of fragile. They, they tear very easily. So the white has almost dissolved into the background. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And let's see, what else do I have here that I want to use? I found some postcards, some vintage postcards that I'm going to do. Now I'm going to have to add postage to these when I send them, but I think, and I found some old um, labels, fragile labels that I'm going to use. This is a postcard that was sent to me um, from Paper Game, and these bunnies on here um, Remind me of, let me get my paperwork out because I did print it off. Um, the person that actually started mail art was named Ray Johnson. And he started um, mailing things through the art and he called himself a correspondent, correspondence artist and collagist. 
and he started a network of artists and he called it the New York Correspondence School. And sometimes he spelled correspondence with an E and sometimes he spelled it with an A. He was, he was quite a, uh, a character, but he did a number of, of pieces of male art. And if you're interested and uh, look him up and see exactly what his career was like. And, um, he, um, he did have, let's see here what it says. <laughs> In early 1962, Joseph Bird responded to several mailings from him with a red rubber stamp, this is not art, which Johnson then used in his mailings for several months. Um, one thing that the uh, artists would do is they would do the envelope and mail it on to uh, the next artist that was going to get it. And inside they would do a partially finished piece of art and they did a collaboration. The next person who received it would do their envelope and then add to the piece of art that was inside and um, and on and on and on. So it was, it was a great way to create a uh, community and, um, and something I think that would be fun, fun to do today. So it might be something that you want to do among your friends or, um, family and can be a lot of fun. Now I love numbers. And I think I want this one right here. But I want to do something with this little area over here. I think I'm going to use my markers. Let's see. You can use markers. You can use color crayons. You can use... Um, just about anything. Color pencils. These happen to be Copic markers. Oops. is reacting to the um, ink and the paper here making uh, really neat designs I'm not sure what it's picking up but I like it and you can just do some mark making on these pieces just experiment really like that and when I'm doing collage I always use my I have an old book here that I use as my glue book I need more light. Yeah, a little bit. And I'm just, I am just having fun. I'm just enjoying the process of finding pieces that I really, really like and um, placing them on my envelope. 
And I'm just going to add layers and layers and layers of this. Let's see. I need to get rid of that address. So I think I'm going to glue this entire thing down. This is almost dry. Now this one I kind of did not tear very well. And I'll show you what happens if you use glue stick and put this down. Okay, I have this um, this old ledger paper that probably should have been thrown out a hundred years ago, but it wasn't luckily. Somebody kept it so I could use it for my collages. <laughs> so I'm going to put a piece of this on. And I'm going to take that right over to the other side because both sides are usually collaged or have artwork on them. I use wet wipes um, to clean up glue and that kind of thing. And also my fingers when they get too sticky. So it usually takes care of the glue stick. All right, and now I have this little tiny piece Okay, yeah, let's try what I use here. These are um, eyes that I used on a collage and really, really like the way they turned out. So I think I could either use that entire piece here or I could just cut out the eyes. I think I'm going to cut out the eyes. So if you have larger pieces of artwork, um, you can cut it apart and use those pieces on your envelope. You can create artwork specifically for your envelope. If you've come up with an idea okay and then 
I saved this out of a catalog that I'm going to use. It looks like, to me, it looks like a shipping label of some sort. And now I'm starting to consider uh, more about my colors, where my colors are falling. And I totally lost my train of thought when I was talking about um, Ray Johnson. The reason that that little this that little postcard with the bunny on it reminded me of him was because that that he also did a little bunny that ended up being like his um, his logo and um, and when he died there was a movie made. And the movie was called, hang on a second here, the movie, it was a documentary, and it was called How to Draw a Bunny. And um, I've never seen it, um, but there are interviews with uh, lots of artists and uh, people that he knew. And uh, I'm going to see if I can find it. And this is also from a collage that I did. Um, I used rubber stamps and stamped. Um, a, it was quite a long quote. And then I did life um, by hand. So I really like that piece. This is from an old envelope from 1981, and I love the, uh, the tattered, torn history <laughs> of this, and I like to repeat shapes. You know, here I have the circle, and here's another circle. that so I can repeat that I can put it there I can put it up here I'm looking at the edges I think it'll look good right here I'm looking at the edges and where things meet and overlap and you can build up as many um, layers as you want when you're doing your mail art. You can, oops, Maybe I want to move this down here. Yeah, I do. I have these three circles here. I have a circle here. So probably I want to put a circle here. And this was also from a journal that I did. Um, I was uh, using my ransom note letters here. 
Okay, so I have a circle, 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 circle. I like that. And you can certainly cut ransom note letters from catalogs, from grocery store ads, um, any kind of junk mail. I had this little tear here in my shell that I wanted to cover up. This I tore off of another envelope that I really, really liked. I think I'll tear around them a little bit more. And this was probably part of a um, alpha of a postmark. And, you know, I've been in um, some countries, and I think you can still uh, do it. Um, I'm going to try uh, the next time I go to the post office to see if the, if the counter postman will hand cancel my mail art and so i'm gonna see what they say and uh see how cooperative they are because then you can do like faux um faux mail art you could get it you could get it postmarked you know or Send it through the mail. You know, they said at the beginning, when this movement first started in the 50s and then into the 60s, that it wasn't real mail art unless it was postmarked. Um, lately, people, a lot of people who do this are saying, well, because of, you know, back then, back that far that long ago um you didn't have the machinery there was machinery but you didn't have the machinery that they have now in the post office and um there the mail didn't get crunched up and so i think they kind of felt more comfortable putting their artwork through the mail uh but now, a lot of people, a lot of artists don't feel comfortable, so they do what they call faux mail art. Okay, I have these little cardinals that I really like. Works with the colors that I'm using. I'm using a lot of reds and yellows. And I'm just, you know, I'm just playing. I'm just kind of following my gut to say, yeah, that looks really good there. This is not um, super intentional or logical. This is very much innocent, playful. Although, you know, there is mail art that has political messages or... Um, statements about what's going on in the world or the artist's 
philosophy or lots of other things. But um, I for this one, I think I just want to do something fun. Here, this we'll do. We'll put this message in here for the post office. That um, this really is fragile, and they need they need not mangle it in the in any of the machinery. These are actually stamps um, that came on junk mail. I can't get them off. What else should I save? You know, um, one of my rules is I can only use things that, you know, would have been thrown away or that could come from the dollar store. So, um, you can use, I know the dollar store has some uh, rubber stamps. So, you can definitely use rubber stamps on, on your mail art. I think I'm going to write the address, the name and address right there and, uh, and, and see if they can find it. <laughs> what fun is that? Not that the post office doesn't have enough to deal with. Okay. I think I need something right there. With the word favorites. Could definitely go there. I have these tickets. These were um, one at a arcade by one of my grandchildren, and they didn't cash them in. So I added it to my added them to my stash. Now at this point in time, you, you when you start putting things in and start overlapping, you ask you ask the question, you know, is this adding to my artwork or detracting from my artwork? So I lay it down and I look at it. And I like that it is, uh, it is in, at an angle. 
uh, it's at kind of at odds with all, everything that is horizontal. I really like that. I like the way this little cutout here kind of goes around the eye. And then I take it off. And did it add anything or not? And I believe it added something, you know. It, it was, it's interesting. It also repeats this orange that's over here in this corner. So I definitely think that it, it adds something to the design. I am going to have to trim it a little bit because I don't, I don't want, um, let's see, where's my pencil? I don't want, I don't want it to go over the fold because it's thick. Okay. Oh, I still have some thank you notes to write from Christmas. I know I'm terrible. But, um, I think this would be a great thank you gift. Okay. Now I have plenty of room for my stamp up here. I have my little area here where I'm going to put my address. I really like the colors and the designs. Um, I like it a lot. Now, I still have this side to do, but I think that, um, you know, if I know my friend, my friend that I'm going to send this to, she's going to want to put it in a frame or something. <laughs> and, uh... So I may not do the back. I may just have that strip over there and have the front. And um, and don't forget to sign your work. I'm going to sign mine right down here when it's dry. So that is the first um, mail art envelope. Now, what you can do is do a piece of artwork for inside and let's see what do i want to do here um i know i'm going to write her a, a letter when i do the mail so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a border around the outside edge and make it like a piece of stationery. And next week I'll show you um, what that looks like. But this is our first piece of mail art. And I hope you have fun with it. I've I really had a lot of fun and I'm going to do a few more and I'll show you what they look like um, next week when we get back together. But for now, I'm going to call this um, finished. A different kind of collage with a different, uh, a different reason for creating it. Um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of play. And, you know, you can go in with your pens and add more uh, marks, which I think would be a lot of fun. Fragi. And do outlines of things, make additional marks. And just have fun. Have fun. You know? 
Sometimes we forget what fun is. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. And I think when the mailman sees it, he's going to have a little bit of a laugh if it doesn't totally mess up their sorting machines in the post office. Um, and I think that when my post man, postal worker, uh, sees this, um, he's going to have a laugh too. And, uh, and I know my friend will enjoy it totally. So I do hope you have a great day or evening, whichever it is, when you're watching this. And I hope you make some, some mail art and get it in the mail and communicate with your friends, other artists, or your family. Uh, and um, I wish you many, many blessings. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.